Hey everybody, Chris Thunder Laser, and in this video I want to go over the Dual Stage Air Assist. Uh, pretty big deal because there's not a lot of companies, actually I don't know any companies that have this. And knowing how to use this to maximize its benefit is crucial. Um, so what I want to do first is I'm going to bring the camera over to Lightburn and kind of show you how to turn it on and off, how to use the low and the high. And then we're going to come over to the controller here for the air assist, the test buttons, and the valves that adjust the air assist. And just gonna go through the mechanics and the philosophy behind it so that it makes more sense and you're really getting the benefit out of it. So let's take a look real quick at the computer and we'll go from there. Okay, so looking at the air assist control uh, panel here, we have our high volume and we have our low volume. Now from the factory, this does not come set to any particular uh, volume. So what you're going to want to do is find the volume that works best for what you're using it for. And how we do that is we're probably going to run some tests. But initially, when you first get it, I would test my, my high volume air. Now, of course, I have a external air compressor, so it's going to sound a lot uh, like a lot more volume because it is. I run about 30 PSI uh, to my machine, and that's about what the machine will handle. Um, even though it's rated for about 55 PSI, the hoses and things like that will not allow for the, the, that high volume of air to flow. So it's kind of defeating the purpose. Um, so I run right around 30 uh, PSI. And if I hit my high volume air, you can hear that is you know, blowing out a lot of air. Now, if I turn it down a little bit, um, this is how I'm going to adjust it. Now, we do have a locking, like if you're doing the same things constantly and you know where your air needs to be, you can always lock it down by using this locking nut at the bottom. Now, personally, I don't do that because I always forget to send uh, the correct version over in Lightburn. So if I have to quickly, I can always manipulate it. You know, if, if I send it over in low volume, but I'm trying to cut, I can quickly adjust this. So I leave these loose so that I can um, manipulate it on the fly. And that's really what you're going to be using this for when you're figuring out what works best for your material because in the end, having this feature is a benefit to you on cleanup at the end of the day. Um, we don't want to be blowing all of that soot and debris all over our material so we're adjusting our low volume air to the point where we have just enough that there's no flames um, and, and we're not pushing the debris everywhere. And one of the things I like to do and what I tell most people to do is if we, if we press on the button and put our finger underneath, uh, of course that red dot is not gonna hurt you. Uh, we're just hitting our green button putting our finger under there and feeling the amount of pressure. We're trying to create positive pressure of air in the head so that none of the smoke, soot, debris comes up and hits the lens, making it dirty and causing you to have to clean it or replace it more often. So we want some air. Uh, we really never ever want zero air. So if I put that there, I can see that there is pressure in there. It's not a lot, but Having that amount of pressure will save my lens, but having so little amount of air is going to make, uh, quite possibly, my engravings come out so much better that I don't have to clean them when I'm done. Now, the opposite is true for high volume air. On high volume air, um, you know, if we're cutting something thin, then we don't need a crazy amount. But as you get thicker in material, you want more air assist. And the reason being is we're basically, if you can put this laser beam on a wire and see it, we're cutting with a wire of fire. Um, and we're trying to put the fire out as it cuts through. And the quicker we put the fire out with air and cool down the surface area, the cleaner our cut is going to be. And we're also moving all of that debris out of the way as we're cutting. So it serves a couple purposes, um, you know, maintaining our lens, cleaning the surface um, and pushing through the material. 
So th there's a, a couple different reasons we want the high volume air. And if I push on my high volume air, um, I can see that that's much higher volume. And if I turn it up a little bit, um, I know that I have about 30 PSI on my, my tank coming to this machine. And that's all it's going to get is that amount of air. Now, I'm gonna run a quick test pattern so that you can see the difference. And this is how you will probably test this air um, to find out where you need to be for your material. And once again, I do wanna mention that I personally do not lock these washers back down. I leave them up to the top so on a whim, if I need to, I can adjust these accordingly. Um, you know, you don't have to lock it down like this one is. This can be up. And it is clockwise is less air. Counterclockwise, moving the, uh, the valve up is opening the valve. Uh, think, think of the valve uh, like a plunger. And as we pull it back up, it is away and allowing air to flow through. And then uh, as we come down, it's closing off that hole. So all the way out is open, all the way down is closed. Um, you know, so the higher it is, the more air you're flowing, the lower it is, the less air. Again, we just don't want this down so far that we are completely off. Uh, by putting our finger underneath that nozzle and testing the air pressure is really the best way to find out that it is flowing. 